Yes, welcome back from Zanzi. Your feel, break, feel Good Breakfast show opening up right here on S3 and delivering something so pertinent right now. I think the voice and message out to everybody in Mzanzi is to listen up to this because you're absolutely going to be benefiting from this one. Now, after the loss of un and uncertainty, as well as turbulence over the past two years, a new book titled Mindfulness, How to Stay Sane in an Insane World, is making mindfulness absolutely easy and accessible to all of us. So author Helen Nicholson has distilled her own business and personal lessons to provide a valuable, practical approach on not just how to cope, but how to thrive in today's world. Now, Helen, it's so good to connect with you this morning. Firstly, let me ask you, how are you doing? I'm good. It's lovely <laughs> to be here. Good to see you as well. Of course, you're looking blue, bright, and bold, which I absolutely love, which is exuding all the energy I think we need on this Monday morning. But firstly, let's talk about how, how sane are you feeling this morning? Speaking about sane and mindfulness, how's your sanity levels this morning? Well, I, I slept well, okay. and I'm grateful to be here. So those are two good things, so I'm feeling good. All right, awesome. Well, off to a good start. Now, I want to dive into you specifically, because obviously you've created this incredible book, which we'll chat about soon. But your career and your journey has been something uh, quite interesting. I mean, quite a polarity in terms of where it started off as an accountant, and then moving over to CEO, and I love the title of this. You call yourself the CEO, Chief Excitement Officer of the networking company, which is what you do, training people on soft skills. Where did this incentive come about for you and this passion and what exactly is the soft skills approach that you're teaching? Well, I think being an accountant makes me very practical. Yeah. So, you know, our work then, it's not kind of something that's like sitting on the top of a mountain in a lotus position. It's okay. deeply practical stuff that people can do immediately in their lives. Mm. And regarding soft skills, I think increasingly soft, I always say if soft skills were so soft, then why are they so hard? So, you know, it, it's increasingly those kind of skills that are actually going to help people's careers go to the next level. So I call them essential skills, not soft skills. I, I like that and I agree with that because it's often that we get told this philosophical reasoning as to what we need to do, but there's no practical solution to it. It's like, okay, cool, that makes sense, but how do I do it? Exactly. In my example, in my scenario, and you're someone that's practicing, right? I mean, you've got a business which is like a baby on its own. I've just started one and I'm experiencing all the, the, the troubles and challenges with that. But then not only do you have that baby, but you also have two babies. You've got twins, right? On top of that. How are you juggling this crazy act of just like 500 babies in one, all these responsibilities, but at the same time, you're staying mindfulness on top of that. How? <laughs> well, I can tell you it wasn't a perfect journey. Yeah. And, and I think one of the reasons why I decided to write the book is because it's been a deeply personal journey for me. And I've battled with it as much as everyone else has. So being an entrepreneur, you know, juggling all the different balls. I was a single mom for 10 years. Um, I mean, my twins are big now. They're about to turn 25. OK, all right. Um, so the business of twins is, is quite successful, actually. It's, it's established. <laughs> well, it, it, it gives you a great sense of accomplishment to see them turn out to be like really amazing yeah. you know human beings but I think that so I learned some stuff along the way and about how to balance things I burnt out twice um, I nearly died once because I wasn't taking care of myself oh, wow. and so I the lessons that I've learned over my career have helped me and I thought I wanted to share them and put them in a book to help other people I love that because it's also something that I'm sure everybody can relate to because it's not just something that you've made up and made up from like absolutely nothing. It's something that is a real experience. So with that, I think everybody's going to have an opportunity to connect to this book. And it's something we'll be chatting about in just a bit. Of course, this is just the beginning of Zanzi. Stay with us because we are going to be continuing our conversation on mindfulness, a discussion that's going to absolutely, uh, well, wake up, I think, a lot of conversation within us. And at the same time, something that's so important right now, I think with everything that we've gone through, a lot of us are struggling with uh, just the thought of how. And I love the fact that we're going to dive into that in just a moment. So, Mzanzi, don't go anywhere. We are going to be tackling all of these mindfulness topics. One thing I wanted to ask you about, is there anything that uh, before... Oh, no, we've got a lot of discussion and stuff. Is there any little trick that you have just in terms of, like, preparing you for the day? I mean, preparing for uh, a session like this, coming to the big uh, world in Mzanzi Live, how do we just kind of get into our, our, our mindful state and, and, and become present? Is there any little tip that you can maybe share? Breathe. Breathe, I like that, okay. <laughs> you know, we don't breathe properly. And, um, you know, I, I do a technique every morning where I take my hands and I put them on my tummy and then I barely breathe. Ooh, you know, nice. so you breathe in to the count of four, you hold your breath for seven, and then you slowly exhale for eight. And you find that that immediately just calms you down. So whenever you're feeling nervous or you're feeling anxious about anything, go into the bathroom, do four, seven, eight breathing with your, you know, barely breathing so you don't lift your shoulders like that. And it really helps. All right, I think I'm going to chat to you more about 
that and maybe we can even have a session which, with you, Adam Zanzi, of course, at home, and we can practice being mindful and practice on our breathing. But uh, before we get into that, let's head back to the kitchen, get the bellies full, and then we'll be back for some more mindfulness. <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, I'm Zanzi. Welcome back. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show and continuing the conversation that is so vital to all of us right now. We're talking about mindfulness. And a recent national survey conducted by a leading pharmaceutical firm and advocate for mental wellness has revealed a significant increase in psychological and emotional stress among South Africans because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, we are continuing the conversation around mindfulness and how we can stay sane with author Helen Nicholson. Well, we were having an incredible chat earlier about obviously some of the practical ways of being mindful. We're digging into the book, but an alarming fact uh, and, and a statistic that we've just been discussing now shot up by 56%. We're talking about stress in South Africa since the pandemic started. Our stress levels have shot up by 56%. That is huge. That is monumental. Why? What's happening? Can we do something about it? <laughs> I think in many ways, COVID forced us to be more mindful. Yeah. So Warren Buffett has that wonderful saying where he says, you can see who's swimming naked when the tide goes out. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's what's happened with the pandemic, is literally, so if a marriage was in trouble, then, you know, COVID revealed it. If a relationship was in problem, if you didn't like your job or your work. So everything was revealed. So in some ways, and when you were stuck in hard lockdown in the four walls of your house, there was no nowhere to run, you know? And I think we spend a lot of our lives um, self-soothing ourselves, you know? Yeah. Every, we keep busy and a whole lot of other things and suddenly all of that was taken away and we had to confront ourselves and I think that's why the stress levels have gone up so much. I like that it's almost like this analogy of a lot of us you know when we push some of our issues under the rug or, or, or under the, the, the couch and then essentially it was almost like COVID came and just whoosh, whooped the rug away and then we were exposed to all the truths and our realities which a lot of it also involved the fact that we are tired right like we overworked and one of the things that you chat about and unpack in your book especially is how to incorporate strategic recovery into our daily lives i love the idea and the sound of that but what exactly does that concept mean so sports people will always perform and they recover. Any sports yeah. person will have recovery built into their schedule. Yes. And us as business people, we just perform. And you know, a lot of people say to me, 2022, I'm gonna perform better. And then I say to them, well, how is your recovery strategy gonna be amplified? Because you've got to increase both at the same time. So I love words. So I imagine your day as a sentence. And at the end of the day, my question is, what is your full stop? Okay. at the end of your day. Because often we don't even have a comment. That's why we're still sitting on our laptops on our phone. Oh, okay, yeah, you yeah. Know, so something that you do that marks the end of your day. So, you know, I often will have a bath and I change clothes. So that symbolizes to my body, okay, now we're done with work. We're now moving into like a relaxed kind of part of the evening. Okay. Imagine your week as a paragraph. What do you do on the weekend to recover? You know, and almost having some kind of digital detox. And the, and the research is very compelling around that, mm -hmm. is start taking your phone and putting it somewhere else because those constant bings, you know, of, of our phone are not helping us with relaxation. Yeah. And then imagine your chapter is a month. What are you doing monthly to recover? Because often the only way we know that February is about to change to March is through debit orders come through our account, <laughs> which is not That's a great, so true, yeah. um, you know, it, we need some positive rituals. Mm. And lastly, holidays, you know, at the end of a year. And I think increasingly in South Africa, we've had that old fashioned paradigm where you take one December holiday. And I think as people's stress levels have risen, we've actually got to break it down and have little mini recovery breaks. Yeah, but not only that, it's like we force that time of recovery into such a small period in the year that we become so busy trying to do the things that we hoped we would do at the end of the year that we're actually more busy in the holidays. Come back into the year, you're not refreshed. You haven't recovered. Speaking of recovery as well, one thing that I've been diving to and something we chatted about just off air earlier, sleep. It is such a pivotal thing when it comes to recovery and obviously incorporating the strategy that you speak about when it comes to intentional recovery. Something for me that I'm experiencing right now, just trying to make changes in time and quality of sleep. And on top of that, I love how you mentioned the technology that we are using that is now not becoming a positive marker. You try to go to bed and then you hear ping, you get distracted, you get woken up and then you get pulled into your phone again and that deep abyss can carry on for hours until whoa the sun's come up your reasoning behind sleep though i'm sure you can you can tell us more about this and elaborate on its importance exactly especially for someone trying to be mindful at the end of the day right 
So I believe unashamedly you need to sleep your way to the top. Sleep seven, your way to the top? Seven like to eight that. hours <laughs> on a great mattress. Okay. Um, you know, because I think we spend so much time, first of all, we don't spend money on our mattresses. Yeah. I, I would, if I didn't do this, I would be a mattress salesperson. I feel very strongly about it because <laughs> you must be feeling like a million bucks when you get up. Yeah. And I think we've got to create the right environment. Um, but I think there was an old fashioned paradigm. We were talking about it off air about sleeping when you're dead. And we used to we wear our sleep deprivation like a bad yeah. Honor. And I think what's happened in the last kind of couple of years, Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world, he sleeps for eight hours a day. Why does he do that? Because he knows it makes him more strategic, it makes him a better husband, a better father, a better everything. And, and the, the, those are the people I think we increasingly need to have as our sleep role models and not the people who were sleeping like two, three hours in the past. Oh, I absolutely love that. And of course, this conversation, this conversation is going to continue, Mzanzi. One more thing before we get into it, there's an incredible competition opportunity opportunity for you and let me read this out so you can get your hands on this absolute gem of a book it's called mindfulness how to stay sane in an insane world and it's available in major bookstores online online directly as well as on Amazon and the Kindle ebook now we are doing an incredible giveaway and all you need to do is answer the question what helps you to stay sane in a busy world as simple as that what helps you stay sane in a busy world come through answer our questions and share them on our Expresso Facebook page and of course the terms and conditions can be found at expressoshow.com and the competition closes at 12 o'clock on Wednesday so get entering because you definitely want to have this book and this tool to success in your arsenal. One more conversation coming through and we're going to be practical about this and help you at home become mindful. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>